What you've just heard here was the current version of a synthesizer which I've written in Python. The organ-like sound is basically a sum of multiple triangle waveforms, and each of those triangle waveforms has a different frequency. They are all part of the harmonic series. The harmonic series is basically a sequence of frequencies in which each frequency is a multiple of a base frequency. For example, if we have a base frequency of 440 Hz, the next frequency in the series would be 880 Hz, and so on. On top of that, a reverb effect is added, and this reverb effect basically creates a copy of the current rendered signal and saves it in a buffer. This buffer also contains all previous saved copies, and to create the reverb effect, those copies will be all added to the signal. The more copies are added to the signal, the stronger gets the effect. This is how you can control the depth of the reverb effect by changing the amount of copies which will be added to the signal. Overall, it's not so complicated as you might think if you hear the actual sound. Now let's talk about what happened since the last video. At the beginning of the video, you have seen a version with a graphical user interface. The waveforms have been split again and you can now select your MIDI device from a drop-down menu. Now I've created a version without the graphical user interface, which can be run from a command line. Parameters like the length of the attack phase can be changed in a configuration file. The idea behind this version is that it can run on a Raspberry Pi with a touchscreen, a few buttons and some potentiometers. And for that I've experimented with a few ideas how this might look like and did a few 3D prints. First, I've used a 2.8 inch capacitive touchscreen from Adafruit and created the top plate for it. But at some point I've broke the touchscreen and needed a replacement. I've ended up with a 3.5 inch resistive touchscreen from Kuman, which is way cheaper than the ones from Adafruit. To access the touchscreen and the display in Python from command line, the library Pygame is used. The rest of the hardware includes 8 potentiometers, 2 LEDs and 4 buttons. The buttons shall be used to assign the potentiometers to a different set of parameters. The LED indicates in which mode those potentiometers are set. For example, if the first row controls the envelope generator, it can be assigned to control the filter or the low frequency oscillator. This way it's flexible and independent from the setup of the synthesizer. Let's talk about how everything is connected. A potentiometer is an analog component, which means if you read it out, you will get an analog signal. A Raspberry Pi can't read out analog signals per default, but it can read digital ones. A digital to analog converter can help out and convert the analog signals of a potentiometer to a digital signal which can be read out by the Raspberry. Now you need to connect that converter somehow to the Raspberry. The Raspberry Pi has an serial peripheral interface, or in short SPI, which often is used to communicate with microcontrollers, display drivers or digital analog converters. It can be accessed via the GPIOs. If the touchscreen is attached, it blocks 26 GPIOs, including the first SPI of the Raspberry. Luckily, it also has a second SPI, which can be used to connect the digital analog converter and the eight potentiometers. The touchscreen also blocks all of the 3.3 volts and 5 volts GPIOs, which are needed to power the digital analog converter. On the back side of the touchscreen, there is a 5 volt pin and a ground pin for an additional fan. This is used to power the digital analog converter, but it needs to be lowered to 3.3 volt. And that's what the level shifter is doing. That's it for the hardware right now. Now this was very technical. If you want to learn more about it, I've written a few tutorials about those topics on my website, which go into more detail. 
You can find the links in the description. Back to the programming stuff. In the process of programming the command line version of the synthesizer, I did a huge cleanup and refactoring. The envelope generator was completely rewritten and now it's time-based. The previous version was sample-based and not very efficient in terms of performance. It multiplied a specific gain level to each individual sample. When you change the length of one phase, you basically change the amount of samples whose gain levels needed to be adjusted. The new envelope generator just multiplies the current level of a phase, depending on how much time has passed, to all samples of a chunk. Other than that, I fixed many bugs and also found out why there was a lag when I've played different notes fast on my MIDI keyboard. The answer to that is pretty simple. Since I've started programming with the library PyAudio, I've used chunks with a size of 1024 samples and a sample rate of 44.1 kHz. This means every 23 milliseconds a chunk will be rendered. 23 milliseconds seem to be a very short time, but in fact it isn't when you play your notes on your keyboard very fast. I've ended up using chunks with a size of 256 samples, which works really well. And that's about it. If you're interested in the code, you can find it on my GitHub account, the link is in the description. And if you are curious about the heart of the synthesizer, the oscillator, the envelope generator, the filters, you just need to check out the package processing. The other packages actually have nothing to do with the actual audio synthesis. Most of it is for the graphical user interface and how to transfer the data between the MIDI keyboard and the actual synthesizer. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.